Well, a 4.2 magnitude quake has been detected on Mars, lasting 90 minutes. NASA says the event is one of the biggest, longest lasting, lasting Mars quakes the mission has ever detected. Joining me now live is astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker. Brad, great to see you. Yep. 90 minutes, that <laughs> seems like an extraordinary long time. It, it, look, it really is. And this is kind of one of the things that caught him by surprise is, you know, we just know Mars quakes work a little bit differently because uh, the soil and the density of that soil in Mars is a little bit different. It can Those waves travel through the ground differently. But, yeah, the fact that it lasted uh, for 90 minutes uh, was quite intense. And it just sounds and operates differently than what we have here on Earth. But this is not the first one there in the last few in the last month there's been several mars quakes why is that yeah and this is kind of one of the big, the big things is they're detecting a lot of these really low level quakes the magnitude one and twos you know if you think about the victorian one which is a magnitude 5.9 these are thousands of times weaker than that one um but because they're having so little and now they're starting to have quite a few of these more mid-level ones uh this is really kind of the important goal here is they're trying to understand what is exactly going on the inside? Obviously, here on Earth, we know the tectonic plates drive the activity like the volcanoes, uh, like the earthquakes. We've always believed Mars has had tectonic plates, but we haven't seen a lot of evidence for that. We've either thought that they're more solidified and frozen or fused or something like that. But the fact that we're seeing these quakes in the number and the density and the quantity and lasting for 90 minutes shows that there's still some activity underneath the surface. So is it completely dormant or, or quiet? Or is there a little, little, low, little low level of rumbling down there? And then what does this mean for the Earth? Did, was Mars always like this? We think not. It was probably more like Earth in the past. So will Earth have this future as well? So this is kind of one of the exciting things to find these very different quakes on Mars. Well, hopefully, uh, if we do, it doesn't last 90 minutes, Brad, <laughs> yeah, fingers right. crossed. Now, Jeff Bezos's rocket firm, Blue Origin, is sending its next group of amateur astronauts to space this month, and there'll be an Australian on board. That's great news. There is. You know, this is going to be the second flight only. You know, they had their first flight with four people, including Jeff Bezos and his brother, in July, the second one happening in just a little over a week, the 13th year. Uh, and a Sydney alum, so he graduated from the University of Sydney, worked, started at his own company or worked on this company called Planet Labs, which does Earth observations, so building small satellites and cameras to help agriculture, water, you know, you name it, and now is investing a lot of space companies. Well, yeah, he's selected as one of those to go on this second flight. So it's pretty exciting given that, you know, this, this industry is just now starting and we're already starting to see Australian representation in it. Yeah, that's terrific for Australians and, and hopefully more to come. Uh, but i got to ask, because there's rumours that William Shatner, now fans, of course, might recall him as the Starfleet's youngest captain on the uh, Enterprise in Star Trek, Brad, but he actually might also be on board. That's right, from the youngest captain to the potentially oldest person in space. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, so, you know, this Blue Origin capsule, you know, when we saw uh, this is from that July landing, can seat six. They had four on that July flight. So it's believed that they'll at least have four this flight. Now, they have announced two, as we said, there's at least one of those Australians. They specifically haven't said the other two, at least. And there's a lot of rumours that um, uh, William Shatner is allocated for one of those seats. Now, one of the beliefs is if you remember back for this July flight, they actually auctioned off one of these first seats and it went for about $28 million. And then the person mysteriously wasn't available. They had a scheduling conflict and that kind of left people scratching their heads. Well, maybe it is because William Shatner was changing and, and starting a television show for this program is what some of the belief is, and we'll use this flight as part of it. So, you know, in just a little over a week, we may... Well, we want to keep tabs on where William Shatner is to see if he's hanging out in Texas next to Jeff Bezos. 